So the big question that we're getting is, did the real estate market actually start to make a shift from a seller's market to a buyer's market? Well, we're gonna go over that. We're gonna talk about those crazy feds who are getting ready to meet, talk a little bit about, uh, well, maybe the possible outcome of what's gonna happen. And we're gonna discuss what to expect over, well, the next 30, 60, and then of course, six months. What's gonna be happening? How do we make our best business plans for our families? So with that, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell so you know that when we have these uh, little episodes that you are alerted of them, they're free. Uh, it's real time. Uh, we're not talking about, <laughs> we're not talking about information from like June and July, like I read today. Uh, we are getting real information today and we're at almost the end of August here. So make sure you share the link. Hey, let us know if you like it, uh, you know, it's, it helps us to understand where you're at. And then of course, keep the questions coming because well, we answer them within 30 minutes, except for on Sunday. So if you have any questions, make sure you post them. We've got three folks that pose uh, some questions. We'll uh, go through those. But in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in our real estate market. And are we seeing a market shift? Okay. To be seasonally correct, you need to understand that real estate, like many other things, has cycles, okay? And last year in 2020, when we were locked up at home, well, supposedly, uh, we weren't supposed to be going out and doing anything, so we really didn't see our normal seasonal changes because, well, you were at home. You had a lot more time sitting in front of the computer getting smart and and, uh, and learning more about real estate and what should I buy, what should I not buy. Now, the difference is this year we were let out. Restricted a little bit again, but still we're out. We're out doing our thing. We are seeing, we are seeing exactly as predicted as if you've been watching the show, uh, this normal seasonal slowdown. So about the mid to late August when, well, guess what? Students are getting back into school. We've got last minute vacations. We've got a three day weekend coming up. We have a lot of things that are happening and transitioning this time of year that takes the focus off of the number one, hey, I wanna buy a home or I want to sell a home. It becomes number four. Okay, well, that's not unexpected, especially if you're watching the show, you've heard me talking about this for the last hmm, three months and it's coming to fruition. We are seeing a number, or just seeing, I'm hearing because I chat with a few folks every single day. Uh, and so when we talk about, you know, feedback, especially in the rural areas, we are seeing an increase in market times. We're seeing a decrease in showings. And we're seeing, well, a little bit of a slowdown. Okay, that is normal and absolutely expected. Is it gonna be like this moving forward? No, because what happens is, is people start to settle in, and this is typically mid to late September, after they've taken their last minute vacations because the weather's gonna change, everything else. Uh, they've got uh, you know kids and uh, students are back in school, things have kind of normalized. Things have, well, started to balance out again. Real estate then starts to become a top priority again, and it picks back up, totally normal. Should you panic? No. So there's two important messages here for you as we consider this. And when, as we go through the numbers, you're going to look at this and say, oh, the media, we got to, we got to control those people a little bit more, or at least filter it. So here we go. When we take a look at sellers today, because buyers are not in the mindset of having real estate as number one, you need to be compelling. That means you have to be a little bit more different. So when people, they're, they're looking at your listing, you know, if you go live on the market today, like we had 1,572 in the last seven days, they look at that saying, okay, oh yeah, yeah. But you want somebody to go, okay, okay, okay. What was that? And that's what you want. So being price sensitive. Now, if you're one of those folks that missed that mark and became one of the 
484 price reductions, should never happen. Or maybe you were the one of the 25 or 135 homes that did not meet a buyer, should never happen in a limited inventory, right? You got the market to message wrong, okay? Message to market, actually. You got it wrong. Fix it, okay? In a slower time when buyer eyeballs are not on your home specifically because they're on vacation. Okay? I can't tell you how many people that I've spoken to says, hey, George, I am not going to be looking at uh, my portal for about the next 10 days to two weeks. I'm going on vacation. Fabulous. It doesn't mean that they're not there. They're just not actively there. But if something comes up that says, hey, then they are. And that's what you need to keep in mind. So price, remember, is the very first impression that buyers have of your home. I guarantee you, when people are looking at it, and if it's you, you're looking at it, the first thing you look at, you see the house, and the next thing is the price. Because the price tells you if you're gonna look any further at that house. Because if it's not matching in your, in your perception, boop, you're just gonna move on. And it's even worse now, okay? But it's short-lived. So, message number two. Buyers, <laughs> now is the time if you want less competition and more flexibility. Now is the time to be out. That doesn't mean it's running forever. You have three weeks before things start to gear back up again. Eh, maybe four weeks before things start gearing back up again. End of September, uh, first part of October, that's when we see the swing and the upward trend of sales and then it falls off again about mid-December. Okay. Perfect. Plan for it. Now, with that, we, we had a couple of comments. So like Jewel, Jewel said, George, the heck, man, what, what's up with the inventory? And, and is this going to change? Are we going to get more homes? And I hear this every single week. And I totally get it. But here's the thing, right? So we look at, we look at, I have a couple of charts for you here today that Marie will post. We look at and have been seeing this chart, I'm going over to this side. As you can see, the dark green, those are homes that are sold. Light green, those are the homes that are available, okay? And as you can see, because this is more consistent, a crazy year of 2020 versus a crazy year of 2021, you can see that we have more solds than active inventory. In fact, our active inventory is like super, super low, okay? Give you a little perspective. I love this one. I'm going to go back to 2018. And 2018 was a eh, modest market. 2019 eh, was a modest market. And then all of a sudden, 2020 hits, and we're like, what, what happened? Right? Because here it is. I'm going to show you normal. Normal. And come to this side. All right. So as you can see, whoop, there we go. Normal is. There we go. Everything's in reverse for me. This is our normal active inventory, right? There we go. Okay. Light green, normal active inventory. Notice that when we come over here, that's completely different. When you take a look at here, which was August of 2018, and I draw that line across relatively straight, and you come down here, you can see our inventory is horrifically low. Is that normal? No. So the question is, and a lot of people say, and, you, and uh, they say, you know what, George? I was reading uh, CNN, and they were saying that our market is going to shift. It's going to crash. Uh, we saw, we, we were listening to different uh, folks at KW and whatnot, and things are going to be you know, on a shift and on a change. And that's going to happen like soon. And my response is, hey, listen, we have seven to 10 months of inventory. Nope, that's not correct. We have seven to 10 days of inventory. A healthy market is four to six months of inventory. We, as I just showed you, right here, we are so far off from having our normal inventory, it's going to take a lot of inventory just to get us back there. If you look at our numbers, and this is what's really important to look at. So year over year, our inventory is still down 9.1%. Now, if somebody just finished watching, you know, say like January, and they said, uh, George, uh, you understand that, you know, January was like 42% less inventory. That's a, that's a big shift. Hang on a second. 
we hadn't crossed over our crazy year to crazy year. We were still comparing 2020 to, to uh, you know, 2019 at that point. And we needed to get the inventory, the, the, the similar markets to match each other for the numbers to match. Otherwise, well, you know, there's lies, there's damn lies, and then there's statistics, okay? The key is right here, we're now getting closer to a matched market. 2020 was a crazy market, 2021, equally crazy, right? Lower inventory, lower rates, a lot of, a lot of velocity as far as pent up buyer demand and things like that. But, you know, when we look at it, we're up 12.4% on homes available from last year, which is great. And when you look at Pended, Pended matches it. It when, when the new on market come up, Pended go up. When the new on market drop down, Pended go down with it. Why? Because there's so much pent demand. It's just, it's just like this little, little uh, fish chasing the, 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 the big fish chasing the little fish, right? And that's literally what it is, you know? If it was like Pac-Man, right? But anyway, it, uh, for those who remember Pac-Man. Anyway, so when you look at these numbers, you have to keep that in perspective because year over year, we're up 11.9% above what we were last year and solds are up 21.3. Okay, we've been edging up a little bit more because when we come back and we look at 21 over 2020, so 2020, 2021, right? Inventory is down 9.1%, okay? We hit the single digits, not surprising, we expected that. New on market is up 4.4, pended are up 2.8. We keep following that up, right? Uh, Solds are up 5.9% and we're starting to see a little bit of pullback. Not uncommon, why? It's a seasonal normal. <laughs> That's why. Don't panic. Plan for it. Knowledge is power. Those folks that are planning for it are doing great. You know what's really funny? Uh, I've actually had a, a couple of conversations with, with, uh, with some buyers and some sellers. We'll go through some of those. And uh, it's funny. So we'll be out with uh, Dan and Kathy today. And they're like, hey, man, we're seeing it. We're seeing, uh, you know, homes aren't going off market in seven to 10 days or they're hanging on like 14, 20 days, some of them, you know, 33 days. Uh, 33 days is definitely overpriced, which means that they're getting less, less offers, okay? Does that mean that the market is shifting? No, they just understand it's seasonal, they're seeing it. But they also know that that now is a very finite timeline that they need and can be more aggressive, okay? Give up fewer concessions. Give up fewer, give up concessions, give up fewer concessions. That's right, okay. Buyers are in a stronger position, okay? Now, is that in all little microeconomic areas? No, there are some places on the east side in Bellevue and Kirkland that, well, homes are so few, in fact, there's like five days of inventory, if that, that they are seeing multiple offers still, but not as aggressive. That's definitely an, a, a point. So when we take a look at uh, month, you know, same month, month of August, you, you know, 2020 versus 2021. Note that our pendant is up 2.8 and we're still up 5.9% for the same period one year apart. And we are on the positive side of that, okay? When we come over month to month, this just helps us with trend, okay? And this is showing us that this is our normal cycle. So we're up month over month. We've seen uh, a 23% increase in inventory, 3.1% uh, in new homes. Uh, we've got pended at 11.9 and uh, solds are uh, down 2.3. Not uncommon. Uh, I I, we expected this. We, we said our sales would start to hedge off a little bit because mindsets were going to change for a normal seasonal market. But here, look at this. New on market, 1,572. 2,038 pended in the last seven days. 1,696, basically 1,700 homes sold. We're still higher than what's coming on market. We're still drawing it down, okay? It's a good thing that we are seeing more homes coming on market. What is a big push? Market rates are still at 3%. They just creeped up just a tad little bit. Still no points. Non-owner occupied at 3.5%. Now, what's gonna change? What's gonna be different? Aha. One, we have our seasonal market that's gonna be a little bit different, but remember, We've got the feds that are meeting, I believe it's in South Dakota, having their little cone head hats uh, to do the prediction. And the question is, just like was asked last week, will they stop 
purchasing mortgage-backed securities. If they slow down purchasing mortgage-backed securities, our interest rates will go up. Understand that. So you might be saying, George, what the heck is a mortgage-backed security? All right, if you didn't watch from last week, mortgage-backed security in a simplified format. I have banks. I got Bank of America. I've got Wells Fargo. I've got uh, Dan with Cornerstone Lending. I've got Juliana with uh, Qualstar Credit Union, right? We've got all these banks and all these banks are writing to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac and FHA financing guidelines, okay? Everybody writes to these guidelines unless they portfolio the loan, okay? They take them and they package, right? So these banks will send in, you know, 100 different loans, 200 different loans. And then Penny, Freddie, they package these into a nice little, nice little bundle, okay? And they'll be worth billions of dollars, okay? And this portfolio has an interest rate that is going to be consistent within the margins of, of, that, uh, of that specific security, and they resell those, okay? They resell them out on the market to your insurance companies, to your hedge funds, to your to your uh, investment companies because it is a guaranteed, I shouldn't say it's guaranteed, it's a very safe investment because it's based on the fact that you will pay your mortgage, okay? Huh. All right, now, right now, and by the way, they sell these internationally also, okay? Uh, right now, the feds, they will go in and they're buying these mortgage-backed securities. Well, that's part of our trillions of dollars of debt that they're creating but it is also an investment. Okay, it's an investment on you that you will have pay your mortgage, hopefully, right? Uh, and that is what the integrity is. But when they start slowing down on, on, on that purchase, it's gonna change, it's gonna shift, which means then interest rates might start hedging up. So over the next 12 months, we're anticipating your par pricing no points, 3% to go to about 3.5%, okay. That's over the next 12 months. It's going to go up, but it's going to, you know, it's like the stock market it goes up and down, but I think it's going to head on that gradual uptrend. Uh, Dan and I at uh, Dan Golden at uh, Cornerstone Lending, he and I were having a really nice chat. Uh, it is really nice uh, having conversations with people that are in tune and stay in tune with trends so they can give the best information. He and I agree that that, that trend is going to happen. And I would say that this time next year, we're probably going to have par pricing around three and a half percent. That is completely expected and we'll start to see part of that change. Part of it is to hedge cost of funds and to hedge off inflation. Now, what's the inverse of that? Well, remember the feds don't control mortgage interest rates. They control your HELOCs, your home equity line of credit, your credit card, your car loan, your business loan. Business loans being the important one here, okay? Because then if it costs more, if they start raising what we call the par price, then it costs more for a business to be in business, to, to borrow, to, to leverage, to stay in business, whether it's inventory or whatnot. Okay, so if it costs more, that means that people start to pull back, which has an inverse effect on business. So it's that very critical balance of how much do we increase to ensure that we keep the momentum of business moving forward. Because remember, equity, interest rates, and commerce are the three things that will be our, our, our true immediate metrics that we're going to see as to what our market is going to do. If interest rates went immediately to 4% today, boom, guaranteed to be like, it would be like a tsunami. We would have no real estate hardly at all. Why? Because that would be catastrophic. Uh, that big of a shift would be just dead, right? Uh, and that's what they do not want to create, nor would they. But just to say, as an example, I'm sure somebody just went, <gasps> what'd you say? <laughs> uh, will it get back up into the fours and four and a half again? I guarantee it will. It will. Uh, it, Good market value is about 5% based on the prime of, of uh, 2%, which is what the feds lend at, 25 to 3% for what banks want for a return. It's 5%. It's not uncommon to see that, uh, get that back to that kind of level. 
All right. When we take a look at this, our market is still doing incredibly well. We are still moving forward. Yes, we're seeing a seasonal slowdown. No, it's not a time to panic. Yes, for buyers, you need to be out if you are wanting to be a little bit more aggressive and have less competition. As an example, Sanju asked me, he's like, George, man, I'm just not finding what I want. Uh, I have to ask, is, is adding on to my house, is that a great idea? Is that, is that fiscally responsible? Okay. Uh, with the increase in labor and cost of materials, which still, even though it has been coming down, is still crazy high, uh, you're, you need to budget about $275, $300 a square foot for a remodel. Okay, uh, or for an addition, I should say. And the question is, does it make sense? Depends on the floor plan of your house, uh, the, the demographics of your house specific. In other words, you don't want to become the best house in your neighborhood. It, with what you're proposing, does it make sense? It, will, will you match or equal uh, you know, your community? Are you adding value to it versus uh, building, but not adding value, okay? Uh, and the biggest one is cost. So there's a few things that come into that. Yes, it can make sense. Many times, uh, I hate to say it, it's cheaper to, to buy existing construction than it is to, to build just because of cost of labor, materials, and availability of vendors, which is uh, a big, big stumbling block right now. All right, uh, Todd, Todd asked, he's like, George, is it a good time to sell my house? Uh, interesting conversation. We had the same conversation with Todd that said, hey, listen, uh, we are in our transitional market, our seasonally slower. Uh, you know, we've had all of the agents saying, you know what, George? Uh, hey, things have been a lot slower. You know, we're not getting the number of showings. I actually have agents returning my calls now. Nothing like a little slowdown to get uh, the professionalism back in our industry, right? Sorry. Uh, but I actually get agents returning my calls now. We get agents actually calling and say, hey, what would it take to bring your client back? Uh, there's something we haven't heard in a while. It's more in the rural areas, but I'll tell you. Uh, so for Todd, yes, it is still a great time to sell. Yes, uh, I would probably look at maybe closer to the end of September, unless there's something else that you want uh, to do timeline wise to bring it up early. And if so, you need to do boop, something that gets eyeballs on that capture somebody's attention. So when they look at the phone, they don't do this, they go like this. That is what you're gonna to need to make sure that you get the eyeballs on. Because again, a home selling in, this, in today's market will not sell below market value, okay? Guaranteed, in a limited inventory, no home will sell for less than market value. Doesn't matter, I'm just telling you. If you have any questions, post them. If you agree with me, let me know. If you disagree with me, hey, let me know. Uh, the greatest thing about our country is that we can, we can agree to disagree, but still, still be friends and still play in the same sandbox, right? Okay. Let me know what your questions are. We will get answers back to you within the first 30 minutes, uh, ex again, except for Sunday. If you have anything, post it. Make sure you like it, subscribe, and be safe. It is absolutely stellar out there. It is a fabulous. I think it's going to be like the low 70s, which is stupendous. Uh, and, uh, and I'll get to be out in it. Be safe. Uh, remember, masks when you're out looking at homes now, at least for the short term. Be safe out there. All the best to you and your families. I'll see you in the next video.